video you're watching will concern this image and another one that were compared to each other in someone else's video. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to explain some of the background that you need to know before doing this sort of thing. Number one, we're going to discuss how this information on the screen got generated. First, it was done through an Apple iPhone of some variety is the presumption I'm working under. Second, this was dumped to Snapchat with the app for Snapchat. Now that means it went through the following process. Liberty German pointed her camera at the girl. She took a picture by pressing a button. From that moment, the processor and image sensor for the cell phone, or more than one, was pointed at her. The image processing system went through and took the image in raw format, which takes up a huge amount of space in the computer's memory. A program, or a hardware level algorithm, if you don't know what that is, that's fine, it's okay. Then sat there and tried to knit together the image, or images, it might have used more than one camera lens, to create this picture. This is not a raw image. There's many reasons for that, but let's just get that done and let's move on. The next part of the process would be that the compression algorithm would convert it to a JPEG, PNG, or some other format. There are very few formats that aren't really just compression. It would throw out any data that wasn't considered important to keep as much detail as possible. In the process of doing it, it would then try to make instructions embedded in the image to reassemble it at the other end when it's reconstructed. This means it would create a patch of data that says blue sky or a reference type like that. It would then chop up the image in pieces that fit around anything that had a sudden change and try to meld them together by starting with the presumption. We'll start with a certain brightness level and a certain color here, and then when we get to here, as soon as we get to this edge, we have to change it to accommodate for it. These data packets are stuffed together one after another to draw the picture. Depending on how many layers it wants to go through, it can then pull out even more detail being able to be transferred from end to end and maybe even be lossless. However, this was stored as a JPG, JPEG, or JPEG which means it throws out a tremendous amount of data. Upon reaching the other end, it might have decided to reconstruct the image with a set of presumptions. Now, that's just in the cell phone. Then it goes through the Snapchat program, which is designed to run filters to make pictures look better, look more professional, cause higher contrast. And it stuck this symbol on it, showing the time it would be available. This means six hours or more. It's actually pointing to seven hours over here, and this is approximately a little over uh, a 90 degree angle here. So yeah, that's a seven hour mark of a 24 hour cycle. It had Liberty German, which is the photographer. This here was not in the sky, nor was this, nor was this when the photo was taken. Down here it says chat with an arrow pointing up. That was added as well. This is another layer of alteration. And then after it did that, it would have had to make sure that when you look at it, you'd have to do a lot of work to see the bad quality that a, a, a white on black or black on white text will cause a compression algorithm to do. Did a really good job smudging and cleaning it up, but it just ends up looking blurry. Now we're going to look down here at this part of the image here and pay some attention to it. Number one, again, around the letters, we're not seeing the pattern of garbage that would normally form because it's trying really hard to make it look nice. And we scoot up here and move to the left side, you will see, if you look really closely, and I'll include a link to the image itself, lines that go up and down that could be saw marks, but they're actually marks probably not in the log. They could be, but they're probably not. And that's examples, probably examples, of artifact of the compression. Here we see a very tiny amount of jagginess, otherwise known as a lazing. On the edges of the letter A, there should be a bunch of up and down jitter part, parts where it looks like stair steps. Same thing with up here around the letter Y. They're not there. It's doing its best to make the image look good and be presentable and be consumable by the masses, which means this is as hardcore Photoshopped as possible. Never mind that it was on like Snapchat or Instagram or any other web page that might have had the image. All of them do compression algorithms and enhancements to try to fix what those compression algorithms do. And yes, if I swapped up Instagram, Snapchat, it doesn't matter. The point is, all of them have these problems. Next, analyzing this is a fool's errand. There are going to be things like, if something in the background looks like a person 
way back in the imaging, way back in the background. The computer routine that did all of this will try to make a face out of it even if it isn't. Yes, the algorithm for decoding and encoding JPEGs sometimes suffers from pareidolia like humans and makes faces in the background. It's rather rare, but you do see it once in a while. Next, some of these 45 degree angles, in fact, they're exactly 45 degree angles, may or may not have been in the environment for real. Those might have been shadows from the trees, but this could also be the computer routine deciding this must be a log that's laying down and AI style adding in little twigs because there's others going the opposite direction for a full 90 degree angle. That's a bit odd. So then again, that could have been literally in the environment or it could have been just the algorithm kind of mushing it together and making it work. Next we look at here, you may have noticed, we have lines in the wood that are not linear. They are not the kind of lines that would be considered, you know, easily compressed. They should create jagginess and, and moyer effects, and they don't because it sits there and basically smudges it together. Next, my web browser is going to do the same thing, trying to make the image look good. Very few computers, devices, photo editing programs, anything, will not touch the information unless it's recorded in raw format shooting raw in tif or j or, or png format or any other format that can retain lossless imaging data none of this is able to be analyzed unless you take it with a giant block of salt the size of mount everest you should not be analyzing jpegs now what could make this worse a video recording made out of a stack of jpegs and then it does the animation trick I want to point out this thing's actual size is this big. It's actual size on my screen. This is probably not the original size it had. This is a video, or more accurately, an animated GIF that was constructed by somebody someplace, and it's attributed to the Indy Star and based on sources from the Indiana State Police. It is a stack of PNG images, or JPEG images, that were turned into graphical interchange format, GIF images that only have 256 color maximum per screen image, that are stacked on top of each other to do an animation, and then it was run through a video compression routine that made it to where it copied the outline of his body from one picture to another to try to make it look smooth by inserting tweening. If you look at this and find from a single image, if I could pause this, evidence of some, quote, photoshopping or editing, it could just be the algorithm, and in fact it is just the algorithm trying to make the animation look smooth. <clears throat> Again, it's trying to make it look nicer, trying to bring out extra details. Add on top of that that this video is probably rotated. It was probably not in this orientation. It's derived from a police department that won't release the raw file so that we can do a better job of it. Your average group of Redditors could probably do a better job very rapidly. They won't release it. And it was from a file they said was data recovered from a phone as raw file data, but it's in again let's refresh the screen this is its resolution but the native re resolution on the camera may have been much higher and this is what we have to work with so anybody analyzing a single frame or any of these frames should see what looks like somebody messing with photoshop unless you're analyzing it as a video in which case you would expect to see those things because it's literally the computer routine grabbing part of the background here and just moving it to the right at that part of that scene, from here to here. It's literally shifting a part of that image and moving it itself. Combine that with the fact that they tried to fix it by rotating it, it it's going to be filled with all artifacts. So if you don't see artifacts, there's something wrong with you. And in this one, you're going to see artifacts too. So how do we do this? Well, number one, this isn't the original image because it's got Snapchat stuff stuck on it. Next, Snapchat does or or whatever whatever program, whatever website it was found from, honestly, will alter it. They add filters. And I'm saying that whatever website, because if you're not aware, this is not a raw grab from the website because it wouldn't have any of this in here. This is a screen grab off of someone's computer that they saved at a news station. Analyzing this is a fool's errand and should be treated as such. Next, final uh, thoughts. Next time this happens, there is a way to archive images on Snapchat. If you can see it, you can archive it. You just have to stop following the rules, not use the app, use some other way of doing it, and just steal the raw image. At that moment, it wouldn't have had this at the bottom, and it would have had none of this up here. Maybe it would have had this embedded, but I doubt it. 
then you would have had as near as possible the raw image. Lastly, I'm going to point out that Snapchat, every website, over time to save bandwidth, especially if an image suddenly becomes very popular or, or desired or sought after, will start compressing it more to make it less of a drain on their system, which means they'll go ahead and recompress it again and add more artifacts to make smaller versions of it. Next, if you are in trouble and are making a video or a photo of the situation for your own safety, dump it to multiple websites that don't erase things and do not use websites that ever erase anything. Everybody should have Imager as an uploaded site and should have the ability to store information in raw mode. You should have an instant hit a button and make a raw recording of a photo so, it you will, so that when we zoom in, we will see a bunch of square pixels in it. And even then, by the way, if you're not aware of it, you may not be able to get that effect because maybe square pixels are faked. It depends on how it was compressed or if it was compressed. Just saying. And yes, you can run this through an AI routine and it will absolutely butcher it even worse. But the fact that I can't see any square JPEGing when JPEG noise is normal means that this image has been heavily altered by the website it was put on and then the web browser did some more. And yeah, this is grabbed from a screen grab from a web browser. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Concluding that this image is fake is a false statement, and concluding the video single frame is a false is a, is is fake is also a false statement, because everything's fake on the internet because it ran through a bunch of computer routines that are trying to make it look good for our consumption. And no, you didn't see a face back in there or any other of those other things. That's just the algorithm trying to make things look like you'd expect it. Goodbye.